All right, boys, we are back, and it's time to continue with our San Jose Sharks. After the Year 7 playoffs, we lost in Round 2 to the Edmonton Oilers, a very disappointing season, a disappointing playoff run. Last year, we were in the Stanley Cup Finals. This year, we could only make it back to the second round, and we got beat out by a team that may have had a better regular season than us, but I don't know how their damn goaltender is doing it. Brassad or Brassad, whatever his damn name is, he absolutely shut the door against the San Jose Sharks, and we were the, one of the best goal-scoring teams. I mean, look at this uh, for our team, right? One goal, four. Second game, one goal, four. Game three, the game that we won, we only had two goals, four. Ernest Shirelli won us that game. Then this game, two goals, four. This game, our offense finally stepped up, gave us four goals, all right, when we went Dale Hunter superb, man. Another game where, da uh, where Ernest Shirelli won us the game, our offense only scored two goals. And then game seven, our offense only scored one goal, okay? So only one game out of those four did our, did our team score more than two goals, all right, absolutely ridiculous. So I'm blaming our offense for that series, absolutely, especially with that goaltender. And they didn't have that good of a defensive team. They had all these offensive players. When I look back at round one, the LA Kings, they had a defensive team. They had Jonathan Quick in the net. But, uh, you know, we were able to score three goals on these guys and play good defense. I mean, Shirelli played good for us as well. But it seems like our offense has just been in shambles the last few years. You know, we can't we can't find that that perfect first line that we have no problem with. It's either get rid of Jamie Ben, get rid of Logan Couture, give uh, give DeCall first line time, give Kucherov, give Boucher first line time. I'm sick of this. We gotta find exactly what we want on our first line, okay? So before we simulate ahead, let me just show you guys the stats, uh, player stats, the playoffs. It's really hard to tell because after the first round. I was already thinking, you know, these guys really aren't scoring that much. But I remember you guys saying, don't worry about the points because you absolutely dominated the LA Kings. So their points are all going to be down because we didn't have a really good goal scoring first round and we didn't have a really good goal scoring second round, right? So Nikita Kucherov, seven points leading our team. DeCall, six points. Uh, Boucher, six points. Kirby Reichel, five. Logan Couture, only five, all right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Our captain needs to be a point-of-game player in the playoffs. He has to be. And this guy, the last few years, see the playoff stats, 13 points in 23 games. The year before that, 10 points in 12 games. Uh, this year, 5 points in 12 games. We finally got him a little bit back on track for the season after that bad start. But, yeah, he's just not getting it done. And now he's 31 years old. You know, we've had him here for 7 years. Uh, he's been the captain for like a good 4 years, 5 years. Yeah, he, he's just ha he hasn't gotten it done, and now he's 31 years old, right? I have no problem with a 31-year-old if he's for sure a good player, but we're still trying to find the right combination with Logan, and uh, I don't know, I think the time might have come and passed. Uh, King, Terrell, Gallagher, a lot of people having a problem with Gallagher. I like Gallagher because I got him on a really good contract. He's only making like $3.5 right, and he's 28 years old. I agree, he may not be you know getting the most points for us, but... For $3 million, he's pretty consistent. I I, I know this these playoff runs, he uh, did not have the greatest run. I don't think he should be on the first line. He's had his best seasons on the second line, right? Um, so I'm not opposing to uh, trade Brendan Gallagher, but he, I don't think he's one of the main problems right now. we got to get that first line sorted out. Brendan Gallagher, Brendan Gallagher can still be a great second liner with that uh, contract, all right? Points. Go down here. King, Terrell, uh, Brower, all right, Sabatka, Palmieri, Lemieux, Yurko. Yurko really didn't do much for us. All right, so Yurko on the third line. Um, I only signed him to a one-year deal, but he didn't really get much done for us on the third line. Uh, and Sundin, nah, not much either. Defenseman, all right, so Eric Carlson, same thing. This guy's only 29 years old, right? But, I mean, he's he's been a good, nah, he's been a good, decent defender it's just that people are expecting him to have like the Eric Carlson type seasons that he normally has you know like 70 point seasons he's been all right for an offensive defenseman he's all right uh Honka yeah but I think uh Shattenkirk might be somebody who can go now because he's 31 we got him in like year two as well or year one and uh, he's the same thing right I mean we just haven't won the Stanley Cup with these veterans on our team and we can go forward with uh Falk Merrill CC and Honka and still get rid of these two, if we wanted to, if we wanted to make a change. I'm just I'm just uh, spitballing right here. But Ernest Shirelli, the good news of the season is that now that we've had back-to-back -back seasons with Ernest Shirelli um, having good years, we know he's an elite goalie now. He's still getting better, but even if he doesn't get any better, he's proved that he can have great years, all right? Back-to-back uh, -back years now, uh, 2.0 uh, goals against average, 2.06. Save percentage, uh, 0.933, 0.928. All right, shout-outs, 9 and 6, yeah. He's, uh, he's perfectly fine, is Ernest Shirelli. And in the playoffs... He's got a save percentage of below 2 in 2 years and a save percentage above .935. Probably above 
0.94 if you combine the two, right? So Ernest Shirelli has had a great uh, last two years. We can, yeah, I mean, I don't think we need Jack Campbell anymore. All right, so that's at least a little bit of good news. We have the goaltender of the future. He's only 24 years old. So you know you have that goaltender for the next 10 years, hopefully. All right, so let's just go ahead here. Let's simulate the rest. We can talk about what we want to do. Obviously, you know, we wanted to go far this year, but the trade last year that may have hurt our playoff runs for this year, Jamie Benn, because, you know, even though he wasn't putting up the punts, uh, I mean, the uh, the points, the punts, the, uh, the points, um... I don't think I think he still made our team better for five on five gameplay. He still had a really good defensive category, right? So he may have helped us get to the Stanley Cup final playing on that first line. But it's not like we gave him up for nothing because the uh, the nice gem that we picked up for Jamie Ben last year at the draft, McFarland, has yet to play for us, and now we can just put him right into the team. He should be ready. I mean, he was a depth forward last year, like eighty overall or something like that. This year. Uh, he should be at least a second liner, maybe even a first liner. I want to play him like that. But we just got to cross our fingers and hope that he did not get the plague, all right? Hopefully he did not get the plague. Hopefully it was the right idea to send him back down to the minors. And we can also, because we're waiting, we can also take a look at other players, make sure that they didn't get the plague before we trade for, uh, if we decide to trade away Logan Couture. I think I'm pretty much dead set on trading Logan Couture. Carlson, I might wait for you guys for the next video, but Logan, I think he's got to go. He's definitely got to go. <laughs> He's just not getting it done. We're seven years in, man. That means, what? like, if you just go to the real NHL, you know, seven years from now, the San Jose Sharks still haven't won the Stanley Cup with Logan as their first liner. Yeah, I think it's I think it's time for a change. So, let's see. I, I swear to God, if the Edmonton Oilers win the Stanley Cup and if Brassat wins the damn Conn Smythe. All right, so the Tampa Bay Lightning are your Stanley Cup champions. Is that, uh, yeah, that's back-to-back -back years, isn't it? So, the Joe Pavelski trade worked out beautifully for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Getting that second line center. I'd imagine he's still on the team. Why would they trade him? He's a perfect second line center behind uh, Steven Stamkos. All right, so that definitely helped him out. Maybe we missed out, but I don't think that uh, Joe Pavelski would have made us a uh, playoff team. I'm real, I mean, uh, a Stanley Cup team. I'm happy with the player that we got back from uh, for the Joe Pavelski trade. To call, I think he's going to be a great center for us in the future. That's what I'm saying. Back when I made that trade, I thought it was a good trade for both teams, and it uh, ended up being so. All right, so here we go. Prospect game, need a drink. Hang on a second. Ah, oh, yeah. Beautiful. All right, so let's see who has retired here. I'm not going to go through all the names. I'll just try to maybe see the main ones. Uh, Bacchus, I saw on there. Uh, keep going down. Pominville. Uh, or San Jose. San Jose. Do we lose anybody? Drew Stafford. All right, so we had him as a depth player. He's retired. That's okay. That doesn't hurt us at all. All right, anybody else? Dan Hamus on Vancouver. Okay. There you go. And then goaltenders. Let's see if there's any goalies. Mike Smith, Pecorene. That's a big year. Mike Smith and Pecorene have both gone. All right, so there you go. Now, let us take a look at our team, and let's see if any of those damn, uh, what's it called, plagues happen to our, uh, our players here. Uh, please don't happen to, uh, what's his name, McFarland. All right, so Ernest Shirelli, 87. Hopefully he gets jumped. But uh, three million a year for another two years for Ernest Shirelli, we're fine for that. We have uh, Jack Campbell for like another eight years, six, six years or something. Um, I, I see the point of oh, keep Jack Campbell. He's a great backup, and you got him cheap. Uh, we may be able to keep him for another two years. I'm just saying he's a good trading asset, and I think every year he's going to slowly drop 83, 82, and then he's not much of a trading asset, right? So um, I won't trade him right away, but he's somebody that if I need the trade to go through, then yeah, I'm going to move him. But there's definitely players to move first. Eric Carlson, 88. Shattenkirk, 87. So these two guys, well, Shattenkirk, we actually have to sign this year. So we're not going to be able to trade Shattenkirk until, might as well hold on to him now for at least one more year and then trade him at the end of next year. So I don't get a, uh, uh, a decrease in reputation for trading a signed player. But Carlson could be out the door this year. All right. Merrill, we got to resign. So Shattenkirk and Merrill, we got to resign. Falk, uh, he could be out the door soon. Cody CC, he's going to get a jump this year, but uh, four million dollars for a top six defenseman—that's a bit much. Honka, he is—he's going to get a jump still. All right, uh, that's pretty much all our defensemen. Yep, uh, right wingers. Let's see here. Troy Brower. All right, so Gallagher. Soon to me about Gallagher. He's dropped to eighty-six now, but he's twenty-eight years old with another 
three years at 3.5 million, right? So we don't need to trade him until he's 30 years old on his last year of his deal. So, I mean, he's a perfect winger for the first or second line if we can find the goal scorers around Gallagher. I'm not using Gallagher to put up points. He's there to support the point getters, right? So he's not going anywhere for 3.5 million. Kucherov, he may be on his way out because now he's 27 years old. He has uh, reached his uh, his climax, basically, and he's still only getting like 20 goal seasons, and we got him to be a 50 goal se uh, type guy, right, Nikita Kucherov, so I think he might be uh, on his way out for sure, if we can uh, make the trade happen. Palmieri, we got to resign. Brower, we got to resign. Yurko, I actually can si uh, trade Yurko. I won't get too much for him, but I'll get a little bit. Uh, Malenin, all right. Ernie, he's still getting better. All, right, all those guys. Left wingers now, let's see this. Kirby Reichel, 85 overall. So Kirby Reichel and Gallagher are my two power forwards. Uh, he's getting a maybe get a little bit better. Reed Boucher, hopefully he gets one more jump before uh, next year. But even if he doesn't, he's still fine. He's played great for us. All right, first line. Yeah, I mean, even I could put him on the second line, but if we need him on the first line. But I think McFarland's going to take over the sniping duties eventually anyways. Uh, Brendan Lemieux, all right. Go down here, all these guys. Papin, all right. And centers... Uh, there he is. Thank God. Anthony McFarlane. He has not got the, uh, the, uh, plague, boys. He's 85 overall before the jump. All right, there's his stats. Yeah, he's definitely going to be NHL ready for next year. Hopefully the jump will give his defensive stats a little bit of a boost, but, uh, he's ready to play next year for sure. All right. Terrell, Sundin, Lewis, blah, 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 blah. Koffler. All right. So there you go. Let's go to scouting report. Let's just see if there's any uh, good players available in the draft this year. Uh, scouting report, yes. Adam Tallender, Grinder. He was the number one guy. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he might have good potential. He's not really a, a NHL-ready type player. Mike Kanopka. See this guy? Oh, wait. Did I... Let me click on his name. There you go. I uh, don't have that guy scouted at all. Uh, Martin Suter, these guys are three and a half star. All right, so there's not really anybody that I want to draft because if you're drafting, you're waiting, you know, three, four, five years for these guys to get ready. Again, we're ready to win, like, right now. If we're going to be trading away guys like Logan, we're not going to be trading for prospects. We're going to get get a guy who's, like, young, but he's ready to go in, like, a year or two type thing. So I think we can skip on the draft this year. I don't think I need to trade up for a top five pick or anything like that. I think I'd rather just trade for the prospects that have been drafted in the last three years, you know? So I'll do all that. All right, so I want to do some crazy scouting. I'm not set on going into the draft yet because I want to actually go through a lot of teams and maybe if I'm stuck on a player, I might want you guys to get involved in uh, the trade. So hang on one second. I just want to switch over. All right, that's much better. So let's see exactly what I need on this team. Um, what's it called? I'm thinking of going out and getting a four and a half star defenseman, all right? Because if we look at what we have, we got McFarland, who's four and a half star, but then everybody else who's got good potential is basically an NHL player now, 24, 25, and up, right? Which is fine. I'm fine with that. But uh, I think we need a another defenseman who's around the same age as McFarland and then maybe a winger to play alongside of McFarland as well. Because I'm trying to build up, again, that first line, right? DeCall can play on the first line for this year, but just going forward, I want to get the players that I know are going to be there and I know they're going to produce. McFarland looks like a future first line center for us, all right? Uh, maybe you put DeCall on the first line, maybe you split them up, I don't know. But uh, I would like to find a dedicated left wing or right wing for this guy and a dedicated two-way defenseman or offensive defenseman of the future, all right? So, obviously, Pete Walton is the big one that uh, everybody I know is suggesting from last year. I'll take a look at a bunch of players here, okay? So let's just go take our time here. I might do the draft, I might not do the draft. I want to see who's available because we're seven years in now. There should be plenty of four-and-a-half star players that are available. Uh, okay, so Walton is 20 years old, right? Let's try to just find somebody who's around that same age. We'll go to uh, 20 years old. All right, so there you go. Between 19 and 21 years old. There you go. There you go. Forward. Let's just see who pops up here. So McFarland and Walton. All right, so that makes sense. Let's see. Walton has not dropped his uh, potential. He's 85 overall as well. There you go. So, obviously, he is the uh, the main goer for us. He played in the NHL this year, 39 points, minus 5. So, you know, St. Louis has already kind of played him. You know, so do they want to give up their uh, all-star second-line uh, winger or uh, prospect uh, first-line left winger? I don't know, in his second year. 
See, that's a good trade. He's got low trade value, definitely. But uh, let's see. I don't know if that's realistic to get that guy. All right, so here we go. We got a little bit more. Uh, Regeer, who's this guy? 88 overall. Holy shit. Jeff Regeer, 88 overall. Where did he go? First overall, 2017. All right, so here is uh, just a McFarland, but a year before. McFarland's like one year behind this guy. So we're not going to make a trade for that guy. He's a sniper. All right, there's McFarland. Walton. Let's see these guys. Uh... 22 and a 22 year old. This guy's 82 overall. Playmaker. Yuka La Laouyan. All right. This guy went second overall behind that guy. So back to back years. All right. So I can go after Pete Walton or I can go after this fantastic Finn. Okay. And then this guy, Julian Gauthier. Uh, he went fourth overall the year before that, but he's still 65 overall. Okay. So this guy on the Winnipeg Jets and Pete Walton on the. Um, St. Louis Blues, you know, you got a Danish left winger and a fantastic Finn right winger, both playmakers, so per both perfect uh, wingers for McFarland. I'm just going to say this, we'll, we'll stop, we won't even mention this guy, I'm not going to get him, his trade value is too much, and he is basically McFarland two years ahead, right? But I got my eyes set on Walton and Lejeunen, whatever his name is. Okay, let's just uh, open this up just a little bit more. Let's just see. There should be a lot of players in here. Yeah, McDavid, Barkov, Regeer, McKinnon, uh, Reinhardt, Barzell, center. Uh, yeah, we don't need centers. I need more wingers right now. Left wingers, Walton and Mistil. Uh Columbus Blue Jackets, power forward. He was drafted in, what, year one, 27th overall. All right. But we already have, uh, what's his name? Uh, Gallagher and uh, Kirby Reichel as power forwards, right? But I just want to show you guys. I'm sure you guys will come up with a good idea. Uh, Nylander. Oh, look at that. The guy's Nylander when I traded him, right? He's still only 73 overall. So I think the uh, trade to get Cody CC worked out for us. In this roster update, Nylander just did not get good. All right, Korostelov. Uh, no, he doesn't look too good either. All right, so I think the main guys for this would be either between two, Lajunian La, La or, uh, where is he, uh, Walton. Lajunian has a little bit less trade value, all right, but he's also one year older and his overall is slightly less, all right. He's one year left on his deal while uh, Walton has uh, two years left. Well, actually, I'd have to make the trade right now because he's going to get another deal, so I could sign him to a good deal right now, Lajunian. All right, so Walton or LeJunion as my uh, winger for McFarland going forward, right? Now we'll take the same thing and go defense, 1921. There you go. Let's just see. All right, so Konichev and Kasparitis. So Boston, 80 overall, 20 years old. There you go. This 20 years old offensive defenseman, Boris Konichev. Uh, he drafted third overall last year. All right, there you go. There's an offensive defenseman for us that we could draft if we wanted to. Uh, Kasparitis, another offensive defenseman, uh, fourth overall last year. Uh, he's still only 66 overall, so no, that wouldn't work. All right, hang on, hang on. Let's just uh, spread out the age a little bit. All right, so still only those two guys. So defenseman, it's looking like there's only uh, one choice here. 24 years old. All right, so Ekblad, there's no way we're getting Aaron Ekblad. His trade value is way too much. Uh, Wesley from Montreal, he is 24 years old, but he's only 72 overall. You see that? So we might be able to pick him up before he gets a boost in the next two years, maybe. Or we could just go after this Kunichev guy. And hang on, let me just raise it one more time. The 20, hang on, 26 years old. Uh, 25, just to be certain. There you go. Seth Jones, Ekblad. No, really only, like, Darnell Nurse you could pick up, I suppose. Well, he's got a lot of uh, cap space, though. But uh, this guy, Konachev. 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 Yeah, Konachev, something like that. All right, he looks like a pretty good defenseman of the future for us if we wanted to pick this guy up. So we can improve our offense of the future by getting this guy with barely any trade value from the Boston Bruins, all right, and then a winger from St. Louis or Winnipeg. And basically, that's our future team, and then we can use them as our depth for next year while holding on to the players that we still have, right? So, yeah, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll go into the draft next year because then we can go to free agency and do all that stuff, right? I want you guys to... Uh, uh, comment away on what we need for this team because I know you want those players, but think about this as well. I want to come back and win the Stanley Cup next year, right? So the assets that we allow to leave, that's fine, but we need to make sure that we don't give up what we need to get back to the Stanley Cup final. So Ernest Shirelli's not going anywhere. Jack Campbell, if you want to trade him, then we don't have a backup anymore. Well, we have Salonen. 
that we can use as a backup for two more years. So it's not horrible. We have a trading asset right there with Jack Campbell. Defenseman. Now, all we need is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have the six. If we want Konachev, that's going to be an offensive defenseman. Is it straight up Carlson for Konachev and get like another uh, draft pick in there and a prospect? Because he'll be Carlson's overall within two, three years, right? So you're taking a backseat, but then you can go into the season with uh, Shattenkirk and Merrill or Shattenkirk and CeCe on the first line. And I don't think it will be horrible because we still have the other five guys who are mid-80s, right? So you make the quick change. Change Carlson for Konechev, and then next year you go Shattenkirk for another young defenseman, and then you have Konechev and the other young defenseman with the other four, Merrill, CC, Falk, and Honka being your NHLers, right? That could stand, unless you guys want to trade for like a 26-year-old defenseman who's top two right now, but you're going to have to ask for a lot of trade value for that, right? So go nuts for the defenseman. And then the forwards. All right, so if Logan's out the door, you got DeCall as your first-line center. All right, DeCall, maybe Gallagher and uh, Boucher on the first line. I'm just, I'm just going here for a second. All right, that could be your first line. Then your second line could be McFarland, Reichel as a power forward, sniper, and then the playmaker on the right wing. Maybe the Winnipeg Jets right winger, right? Because that would fit better. All right, because then you get McFarland, the right winger, and then Reichel. Yeah, then Boucher, Gallagher, DeCall. There's your top six, right? And then your third line, we still have Kucherov, Palmieri, Terrell, King, Lemieux, Brower, Jerko, Sundin for the third and fourth line. I mean, what we could do with this... We could trade for the top two defensemen with uh, Logan and, be, and then just go after the uh, right winger from Winnipeg because the trade value is not that much, right? And then use like Kucherov and uh, and uh, Yurko to really trade and bolster our third line with like power forwards, two-way forwards. I don't know what you want to get, but you can really improve that third line with devoted penalty killers, power play specialists, you know, get something going in there and let the rookies take over the second line for this year. Our second line might be a little bit weak, but we can make our third and fourth line really strong. All right. So I don't know. That's the way I see it. First line, DeCull, Boucher, Gallagher, second line, McFarland, Reichel, and playmaking winger, whoever that is, whatever you guys want. Then the third line, you go Palmieri, and then we need a third line center. I'd say just get like a, a Jordan Stahl type third line center. Obviously not Jordan Stahl, but what, what the Pittsburgh Penguins had, get a third line center. It can't be Dan Terrell. Dan Terrell can be a good fourth line center, but we need a third line center. So we go DeCull, McFarland, third liner, Terrell is the fourth liner. And that third liner, I want to be a stud. Because then he can play alongside of Paul Mieri. And then maybe Kucherov has a third line left winger. Or get somebody who is more dedicated to defense, right? So that's what I'm thinking, boys. That's my idea. I'm going to leave it right there. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Use the rookies as our second liners. And then bolster our third and fourth line. And maybe get a top two defenseman. Maybe. All right? But... There you go. So let me know what you guys think about my plan to get that winger and that defenseman with Ernest Shirelli, McFarland, uh, Konechev, and uh, either that the left winger or the right winger. There's our future built right there, okay? And it doesn't hurt us for next year. So let me know what you guys think. Give me any suggestions, and I'll see you in the next one when we head into the draft.